Praise team and the musicians, the engineers, all of you here and those uh, within their homes, wherever you are gathered, what a delight it is to come before the Lord, to come together, to share the space and to herald the praise and glory to the Lord. Come on, clap your hands, holy shout to the Lord. Good. All the time, God is good. Bow your heads with me. Close your eyes. Let's just seek the Lord. Father, thank you that there's no more veil. It has been rented. Thank you that the abiding place, our tabernacle, is your presence. And that in your presence, there's fullness of joy. At your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Thank you for this wonderful vertical connection. But thank you too for what is horizontal. That today we feel one another, we see one another, we share with one another. For a long time we've been hindered, Lord, to assemble ourselves together this way. The physical uh, presence. Oh God, thank you. Well, thank you, God, that that didn't hold back our worship and that didn't hold back our fellowship thank you for what worship is and for what fellowship is with the brethren behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity unite us from all over this world this hour as we call on you. Thank you for the wonderful connection we're making in this in this temple and for the connection we will we will have virtually with others. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Now we come to beseech you. Lord, I thank you for how you have helped us through this time. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that you have heard our cry. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that you have been there for us, with us. You abide with us to this point. And we thank you, God, for what has been happening that is common among all men, all nations of the world. Thank you that we all could have a focus on you. To know that the eternal God is our refuge. And that underneath us are your everlasting arms. And Father, we want to praise you this morning because we have sensed your presence. We have felt your presence. We were affirmed and reaffirmed of the God who is with us and the God who is for us and the God who is in us and will continue to be with us. You say, yea, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the age. Lord, we never stop to think of what would invade our territories. We never stop to think of what we would encounter along these corridors of life. We don't know what the future holds. Lord, we don't know what else will come, but thank you that we know of a God who promises to be with us in all of it. And we just want to thank you. We want to look to you as a fellowship, and we want to be specific, Lord. Because, God, we have uh, lost some loved ones. And this morning we come remembering Sister... sister uh, Hayden's family, bereaved, and those who are overseas who cannot even come here at this time, we pray you will prepare a way so that family will unite and family will strengthen one another. How we miss her shouts of hallelujah and praise the Lord and her march around as she worshiped. But thank you that she's in a better place where she can do that. And she will not be held back and she will not be disturbed. <laughs> thank you, Heavenly Father, that she reminded us during her time that she, caught, she came here to praise the Lord and that nothing should stop us from praising you. And we thank you for her time serving here, God. Remember every family member, those who do not know you, draw them close to you. Let them come to know you, God. 
Oh God, we pray as they prepare for the putting away of her remains, that Lord, you would work amidst all of the setbacks and the difficulties to navigate this path at this time. We pray, Heavenly Father, that they be able to mourn and that they be able to celebrate her life. We pray for Sister Priscilla's family as well. Oh God, thank you that you now take her from this body that had challenged her, her mind, her focus. Thank you that it's a different story now. That it's all over. The confusion, the struggle, the intake of medication. Lord, thank you. Thank you that we can end the course of this life celebrating that we won't be sick again. We won't feel pain again. And God, I put her husband and children to you and, and grandchildren. Lord, the, the immediate and extended family, I ask for consolation for them. We beseech you in this intercessory moment on their behalf and ask that you bring comfort. Remember AJ, who lost his dad. As they prepare to lay body away, remains away, Lord, we ask for that family too, that you would just bring the consolation, the comfort of your word, O oh God. Thank you that we can find hope in your word, real comfort in your word, and we ask for comfort for all of them today. Lord, not just the bereaved, but there are many distressed among us. There are many who have had tough times. There are many who have relatives uh, who have been stri stricken with the COVID-19 uh, uh, disease. Oh God, we pray that you will give comfort and peace as they struggle to see their loved ones recover. Some have had losses. Lord God, we pray, remember it, Sister Mayor. We ask that you would comfort her heart and that you would strengthen her as she offers a, a care. As she becomes a caregiver now. Oh God, we pray you 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 touch the minds of distressed members. We remember we remember Paulette who was traumatized. Oh God, and she was held up and, and robbed of her car. And God, I thank you that you spared her life. I thank you that she was not kidnapped and she was not hurt. And I thank you that you can replace a car, you can replace material things. But thank you, Heavenly Father. We, we, we can't imagine how difficult this must have been after losing dad. And, and Lord, maybe tying ends or losing ends. And oh God, we ask for comfort for her. Comfort for the family. Restore her, God. And, and answer her questions, Heavenly Father. Oh God, help in ages past. Oh God, hope for years to come. Oh God, shelter from the stormy blast. Oh, the interrogation, the, dis the disruptions, oh, the frustrations of this life as, they, as we meet them down there on the roads of life. Cover us. Cover us. We don't know about tomorrow, but we know you hold our hand. And we pray for that comfort for the Lascelles family. Oh God, we thank you that you have taken Leon home. He was stranded at sea for months. And thank you that he is now at a point and place where in a couple of days he should be with, with Sonia and family. Thank you, God, that no good thing you will withhold from those who walk uprightly. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that you sheltered him and many others. And thank you, God, that you would continue the good work you began. We trust you. We look to you, Heavenly Father. We wait on you. And we tell you thanks for how you are going to work things out for good. Thank you for the leadership of our church. Thank you, God, for elders and deacons and council members. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for all the auxiliary heads, the difficulty working during this time. Thank you that we've kept things together. Thank you for the sacrifices made. 
Thank you for the many connections made, Heavenly Father, uh, and the, 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 the unwavering and unceasing loyalty to the work of the Lord. That there are always those who are discussing and having sleepless nights and, and seeing to the work of the Lord. Thank you that we know we have a church without walls. That there are people out there serving uh, the poor and needy and attending to the needs as they arise. Lord, we pray you we'll continue to bless the leadership, bless the elders, uh, those who have to be in the forefront, oh God, to see to things happening and, and the materialization of, of our goals. Thank you for providing so that we're able to pay bills. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for faithful tithers and, and givers and, and persons who just walk into the, the, the bank and to the office and, and commit, Lord, to see to it that your work continues. God, we thank you that you would have raised up people at PMC like that. Thank you for gifts from overseas and thank you for gifts from where we never knew they would come. But you just pour in your blessings, Heavenly Father. Continue to prove to us that even in distress, we're not forsaken. That there's a good God, a great God, a loving God, a God who cares about all the details of our lives. God, we pray thanking you for preserving membership during this time. That there are people who looked out for their spiritual lives and their personal devotions. And, and thank you, Heavenly Father, for the wonderful connections we've been able to make to ensure that that happens. Continue to, to, to care for your people. And God, thank you. Thank you so much for, for today. Thank you for the servant who will bring the word. Anoint him afresh. Bless him. Use him. Empty him and fill us. Oh God, fill us with your, your goodness. As the songwriter says, fill my cup, Lord. And lift it up, Lord. Come and quench the thirsting of, of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed us till we want no more. Thank you that we didn't lack spiritual food. Thank you, God. And how we pray that you will continue to prove to us that you are God and God alone. We pray now as we adjust to the new norms, whether from the home front or the places where we work, Lord, we ask that you'd help us to cope, help us to navigate our way and protect us during the period Lord, we look to you, we bless you, we honor you, we celebrate you, bless our service, every item of interest on our program. And Lord, we pray that to you will be all the glory, all the honor, all the praise, for it's in your name we pray, and the church say, Amen. 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 You got to put off everything. We just want to give God thanks for this time that He has given to us and for the opportunity to come like this to worship Him. It's good to see all of you who have come, even although I can't see your full face, but I know there's a smile on your face. Amen. And we thank God for the opportunity to just come into the four walls and to connect with each other. And we thank God for those who are still joining us on the digital platform. Um, we give thanks for that also. This month has been celebrated as Child's Month, and uh, we had a full uh, set of programs lined up, um, but because of the situation that we're in, we're not able to do everything that we wanted to do. 
But this morning, we have the representation of the age group 12 through 17 uh, who will make a presentation by a video. And I think it's uh, Jason Orr and others, or Jason Orr, I'm sorry, just Jason Orr, right? So at this time, I ask you to sit back and be ministered onto uh, um, as we, we ask Jason to come in now on digital platform and minister to us. Okay, thank you, Jason Orr, one of our Sunday school students, and uh, you know, using the indigenous musical um, uh, style, style you call it, yes, to minister to us. And uh, we give God thanks for our Sunday school students. Let's pray for our young people because uh, they're very challenged with a number of things, and not all of them have been able to even connect uh, with their. Uh, educational institution and yet some of them are pending exams so we ask that you remember them in our prayers in your prayers we want to thank you for joining us here this morning uh, as we go through this service and we believe that you know it's such a wonderful thing to be in the house of the lord um, we are the church the church gathered the church scattered you know, because it's the people of God that makes up the church. But there is also this thing of connecting and being in the presence of each other. And we thank God for this opportunity that we can come. Uh, I want you to uh, pay attention to notices that you receive here and by the different uh, media, uh, because things change quite a bit as we go along. And I suspect by tomorrow there may be some uh, additional announcements and then we will have to adjust to that. So I ask that you uh, pay very strict attention to whether it is a WhatsApp group, the Facebook page or um, things like that as we push, try to as much as possible to push out the different information to you. But we want to welcome you. Let me hear praise the Lord in the house this morning. Let me hear hallelujah. God is worthy. And we want to hear that coming from also those who have joined us on Facebook, on YouTube, and uh, streaming live. Let's join them in saying hallelujah. 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 God is worthy. Amen. I want to just uh, say a big thank you to uh, especially, there's a special group of persons that I want to not forget this morning and i'm talking about the technical team of this church uh they have held us to, yes yes and come on let's clap them let's clap them yes. 
because they really deserve, you know, a big up this morning. Because as soon as we were not able to meet like this, they were uh, setting plans in motion uh, to ensure that we could be connected and uh, we could stream our service and we could use uh, the different medium. And I want to tell you this, I, I, and I say it here because we, we need to understand and pray for these persons. Sometimes, as Rev said, it's sleepless nights, sleepless nights, just trying to get things to happen. And uh, so I want to just say, you know, let's pray for the technical team because um, they have really been doing an awesome job. And, um, you know, we want to just continue to pray for them. As you would have noticed, that each Sunday we try to do it better. All right? So we were just trying to um, get things together and trying to do things better and better and better. And we had some young people coming on board. So we want to give God thanks for that. All right? Uh, one of the persons that we... Um, we did not remember to pray for this morning is um, Brother Carlos. Uh, Lance Carlos uh, lost his brother uh, this past week. And um, let's remember our Brother Carlos in prayer. So um, I just wanted to push that in because I don't want to forget it down the road. All right, just to make mention of the fact that we continue to have Bible study uh, on Wednesday evening at 7.30 by Zoom. Um, not here, but by Zoom. So um, please join us for Bible study uh, every Wednesday evening at 7.30 by Zoom. And I think even when we, we get the opportunity to come back here, we'll still be Zooming. Zoom. All right? <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, Sunday school happens. Uh, somebody said hi, Sunday school happens, uh, start, starts at uh, 10.30 via Zoom also um, this, uh, today. So there are different uh, classes that are there. Let me just see if I can find that information for you. But uh, yes, it's uh, six years and under. Uh, it's 10.30, seven years to 11 years, it's 11 o'clock. Uh, 12 years to 17 years, it's 11.45. So we ask that you remember uh, to connect via Zoom uh, for Sunday school classes uh, that starts at 10.30 this morning. <clears throat> Friday evening, the National Missionary Youth Ministries will, have, will continue to have their uh, youth meeting. And this is by, by YouTube and Instagram, IG, right? And uh, so please remember that um, the national, so this is the island-wide uh, youth of the Missionary Church Association um, will continue to have their meetings via YouTube and Instagram. And then on Saturday evening uh, at 7 o'clock, our own youth fellowship will have their meeting. And uh, they've been having some very interesting meetings and uh, I, I'm really just thanking God to see how well they're using up the technology to connect with the young people and uh, to minister to each other. And uh, we ask that you remember them in your prayers and feel free to join them in your uh, youth meetings. All right, uh, remember to connect with each other and especially our seniors, our shut-ins, and those who are challenged. Uh, we have many persons who are challenged physically um, some are really going through a rough spot and also we did not remember to mention but we want to mention it uh, Sister Gloria Burrell who is in the hospital we need to get an update on her but Sister Gloria Burrell is in the hospital and uh, we need to remember all of these persons Sister Graham, Brother Nielsen, Sister Bonnet, Sister Burrell and all the other persons uh, we need to remember them in our prayers <coughs> Well, we are now going to pause for um, our tithes and offering. Uh, so we're going to ask ushers to come as we come together to sing the, this uh, great hymn of, uh, of Christian faith. Great is thy faithfulness and God has been faithful to us and we ask that you give 
So if you are joining us online, we ask also that you remember that uh, you can give through uh, transfer, direct transfer to our NCB, uh, it's National Commercial Bank account, uh, it's current account, uh, and it's Portmore branch, and the number is 36107-6621. 36, well, I answer to just hold a minute. Um, so it's 36107-6621. That's the account number. 36107-6621. We also invite you to uh, use the drop box and uh, that our office is open 9 to 2 p.m. each uh, day. So we ask that you use the drop box. All right? We have been very active in also providing care packages for our seniors and those who are having difficulty surviving. So we ask that you give cheerfully uh, to the work of the Lord. Great is thy faithfulness.
We're going to ask the musicians to continue playing as we have the walk of offering. And we ask that you take your time, do not crowd, but uh, come uh, distancing yourselves as we take the walk of offering. Hallelujah. Well, we are coming to a most important part of our service where we hear uh, what God has laid on the heart of our uh, assistant pastor, Pastor Cabo Edwards. Uh, he started a series last week and he will be completing that this week. And uh, we ask that you pray for him as he comes, prepares to come to uh, conclude that message he started last week online and before he gets here we're going to have the scripture reading done by Sister Latoya Jonas uh, Matthew 6 25 through 34 Matthew 6 25 through 34 and then after that we'll have a trio for the Al, Sister Latoya, Sister Anne-Marie will minister in song and then Pastor Todd will come and speak the words of the, the, that God has laid on his heart. So let's uh, pray up all these and uh, let's uh, set our hearts at that place, whether you're here or in digital land, to receive the word of the Lord. Amen. Good reading is taken from St. Matthew chapter 6, reading from verses 25 to 34. Please stand with me for the reading of God's holy word. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the fields grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you, that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, 
and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. This is the word of the Lord. During my late teens, in my early twenties, a friend of mine who is now deceased would seldom say to me, Al, life is a mystery. Don't ever try to solve it. Life is a journey that God has miraculously chosen you to partake in. Whatever life throws at you, don't waste the trip. And things can change in an instant from predictable to unpredictable. We know a pilot who knows the sky better than anyone else. We know a shepherd who knows the terrain more better than anyone else. We have a captain who knows the seas. And this song that we're going to do is one of those songs that tells a story very well, all too well.
morning everyone. Good morning everyone. Uh, it's a good thing again that we can gather like this and uh, welcome. Uh, I feel very elated in so many different ways because I have gotten a new lease on life and uh, I believe that God is doing a thing for his church and God is calling us to see what he's doing and participate with him as he leads us. And I was just sitting there smiling because the lesson I want to bring home, God brought the lesson in our midst. If you're not seeing it, a bird is in the church. And we are going to reflect on that a little bit. I'm not sure if you're following what went on last Sunday. Uh, but we are in the book of Matthew and we're reflecting on a particular section of Jesus' focus on the Sermon on the Mount. The sermon considered the greatest sermon ever preached by virtue of the contents of the sermon, by virtue of its challenging um, ideas, by virtue of its cutting edge as it regards to how we challenge the system that were at play and how it challenges even the religious sect uh, who Jesus by virtue of how he did ministry, by virtue of how he came across to the people for the fact that at the end of his entire sermon the people were appalled and said he spoke with such authority not like those of the Pharisees in Matthew chapter 7 and we're reflecting from last week on this topic. Why worry? Pulling out from what Jesus talked about in this section of chapter 6 verse 30, verse 20, 25 to 34. Um, a kind of text that we are familiar with, but a lot of times we run away with the single verses or the verses that feels comfortable to us, but miss the big picture of what Jesus was relating and how Jesus wants his people to understand how to live in light of their belonging to him, in light of them belonging to the kingdom of God. Jesus is bringing out um, a most pointed lesson for us to understand. And last week, we pulled out two that I reflected on. That one, in this whole section of Jesus' focus, he wants us to know that the kingdom citizen, practice this thing, the kingdom citizen does not worry. The kingdom citizen is in his or her response to situation. The kingdom citizen practices the principles of the kingdom. We do not let up because Jesus has brought to us the fullness of the, the kingdom of God and what the kingdom of God is about. And Jesus is making us understand that our faith in him brings about the distinction of life that he desires us to live. So in chapter 5 when you read the, the um, story and reflected on a part of it, um, verse 13 to 16 in Bible study, as to how the kingdom citizen look, they live with impact, they live with relevance, they live with power. Their life itself brings about a change and a difference in where they are and where they are positioned. Jesus talks about in chapter 5 again the blessedness of the kingdom citizen, that we are distinct in character, in nature, in practice, that we are righteous, we crave righteousness, that also the kingdom citizen practices and pursues righteousness, loves righteousness, yearns after righteousness, desire to see it, even if he is persecuted because of righteousness, he lives it out, he yearns after it, he follows after it. That is what the faith in Christ calls us to, the distinct life of the kingdom citizen. I also made a point that the kingdom citizen, and thank you for that song, the kingdom citizen knows the king of the kingdom. The king of the kingdom possesses qualities and characters that the citizen must know about. For it is in, the, it is in that knowledge of the king that the kingdom citizen finds assurance. If you want to find assurance in these times, 
It is when we know who God is. It is our knowledge of God that allows us to be able to stand the test of time. That allows us to stand these things when the storms of life come. And Jesus talks about that even more pronounced. And I want us to, to understand what Jesus is bringing out here. For if you do not know, the very Sermon on the Mount was the first public pronouncement, the first public engagement of Jesus when he started out his ministry. For we know he was baptized and he was pushed in the, in the wilderness and he was tempted by the devil to test his character, his nature, the kind of ministry, the authenticity of Jesus was tested when he was tempted. And Jesus actually overrides and overcame and shows us that it is not that he is able to sin or not able to sin, but his faith and his confidence and his reliance and assurance was in who God is. And that's why when he responded to the devil, he was, he was able to say what he was able to say. He calls on the nature of God. He calls on who God is. He calls on who God alone deserves worship. He calls on those who know God knows his word. And therefore will not just live by the physical bread alone. He knows his knowledge of God allows him to stand up in steps. And he wants us when he came on the sermon, when he uh, went on the mount and he was preaching and he calls his disciples to him. He begs of them to understand that the disciples of him lives with a knowledge of God. Therefore, they do not worry about anything that comes their way. We talked about last week as well that in our own context, all of what we are going through in this COVID-19, everybody is affected. Everybody has taken a blow. Everybody has been impacted in some way, shape, or form. And it cannot be business as usual for Jesus himself has invested himself on us and caused us to understand what faith, people of faith looks like. That they are valiant, that they are powerful, that they live this thing. That they live in the ideas and live in the knowledge and awareness of God. Jesus clarifies that since we are kingdom citizens, we also must know the king of the kingdom. We should understand his nature, his character. We should know that God is the benevolent God. God is the God of kindness and love. God is the God who cares about who? The very birds of the ear. He is the God who looks on the flowers of the field and he says not even the wealthiest of men can dress or adorn themselves like a simple flower that we can just, you know, in the backyard when, when you want to run the mosquitoes, just pop out beneath them and, you know, light the fire and burn it. The irrelevance of it when it comes down to its value. Jesus is saying to us that we must understand that there is a one who validates us, not just that God cares about the nature so God cares about us, but God also is the one that validates us. He is the one that puts values at value and worth on us. All them to understand what that means. When we see that God is the one that allows our speech to our words, we don't let anything and anybody speak about us. We don't let anybody describe us and put us on a, on, in a dictionary definition of how we should be. It is God that defines us. It is God that talks about us. We belong to him. So he describes who we are. He talks about the nature of us. It is he that has regenerated us, has changed us, transformed us, given us of himself. We have the communicated attributes of God. So who God is, we can be because we belong to him. Jesus himself puts it this way that he calls us to the highest standards of virtue. Read again. 
when Jesus talks about if somebody leads you on one cheek, you turn to them the other. Forgive one another. When he talks about do not judge, what is he bringing to us or understanding? That we, even in our limited state because of our fallen next state, we can still live above and be on our sinful nature. He wants us to understand the kind of quality that the kingdom citizen possesses. That is what Jesus calls us into. So if we're stepping into this new dispensation despite this crisis, we have to know now what describes, define us, what makes us who we are. How do we replicate faithfulness in the world? Do we live and just warn the benches of the churches because we can come when we feel like? Or we live out our faithfulness in the knowledge of God? Are we going back to sleep? Or are we alive and well in the kingdom of God? Because Jesus is outlining to us what we should be like. So if we are not patterning him, it tells us that there is some shortcoming. Are we authentic about our faith or are we failing? Why are we worried? Jesus is the one that gives validation to us. So this morning, I just want to lift these two points as we quickly run through that the kingdom citizen lives by faith in the knowledge of who God is and that the kingdom citizen practices and pursues righteousness. I want us to remember that we had a crisis before this crisis. We had a crisis of immorality. We had a crisis of destruction. We had a, we had a crisis of violence against women. We have a crisis of violence against children. We have a crisis of no moral standard. That there has been a degradation. That the idols of Jamaica was loud and proud and puffed up. That was where we were coming from. It is not like say everything was good before, so we're going back to it. Jesus wants us to see as he brought for the newness because Jesus contended with the systems and the religious sect. So his very message contended with the system. He calls then his disciples to live like him, to pattern him, to love his ways. How we love him the way of the Lord? Do we have the confidence as is in the text? Do we love the scriptures? Do we love the word of God? To pattern it. To be filled with it and overflowing. Or are we just comfortably moving and navigating because it is as it is? This is what Christ is calling us to. So the kingdom citizen then allows the attributes and the characters of God to shine out in his life. Because it is him that has given it to us you now. God has shared himself. God has opened up himself. We have the very presence of God to abide in. If there is lack, it is us. If there is an unwillingness, it is us. If there is a shortcoming, it is us. If there is a waywardness, it is us. God has not moved from his place. God is calling the church to again reposition itself, to again realign itself, to again refocus on what it means to be Christian, on what it means to be followers of the way. We have power in us. We have strength in us. We have the resource in us. The world does not have the reference point that we have. So how is it that we look the same way? How is it that we look like them? Because Jesus was teaching in a wholesome sense that we do not look like them or should not look like them. So again, Christ is calling us to awake or come up to him. He wants us to understand 
As Paul puts it in Romans 10 verse 17, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the message of God. And God is the one now that wants to transform us by this message. But when we hear God's message, it should bring us to a place of transformation and change. How is it that we are hearing the powerful word of God in this denomination for so many years? But we are not changed. What is happening? Is it that God's word is not alive? No, it is because we are stubborn in our ways. We are staying at one place. We are comfortable in our seats. We do not want to see the message of God proclaimed. We do not want to love Christ like that. What is happening to his church? Jesus is calling for a church that is alive, not lukewarm, not undermining his message. Where's the power within us? Where's the movement of the faith believer? Where's the movement of the community of God to transform this community and this nation? This COVID-19 has given us an opportunity. Why are we seated? Are we puppets to our seats? Why are we so attracted to some traditions? And as soon as something has shaken it, we lose our confidence and focus. We miss the marks. We are hitting but a miss. Are we beating the air like a boxer? Or are we moving with intent and purpose for the kingdom of God? Because Jesus was talking about the kingdom citizen and his ways in the world. Christ is bringing us to a focus, to an intentional movement. That is what the faith community is. We are relevant to the time. We make a difference. We speak the truth. We speak about the things that are wrong. We address the situation as they should be. We do not let up. We do not fear. We do not cover. And even if our resources are lacking, we still have the confidence in the God of our creation. The God who cares about the birds of the air and the, the flowers of the field is the same God that turns up in our situation. Is the same God that meets our needs. So are we undermining anybody? Are we letting up on anybody? Are we missing the mark? God gives us an opportunity to arise, to arise, to come up to him, to come up to him. God wants us to fashion and look like him. God wants us again to change our ways. He's teaching in this simple lesson. The whole book or the whole sermon was just challenging the court, just changing that. Just look on the message again. It mirrors us. It tells us where we are. And it brings us to a focus as to who we know are in Christ. So if we look like our old ways, something is wrong. Something is amiss. We have either let up. We have either not been faithful to God. We, are, we have either put another God in space of God. We have find comfort in our own steads and our own interests, and our own priorities. So then, Jesus was teaching that the person or the kingdom citizen lives by faith in the knowledge of him. So faith now is the antidote for worry. Faith is what we do and what we be. So we do not fear and tremble. We face the situation because our faith allows us to see beyond what we are and where we are. The antidote for Jesus is saying. You know what is how Jesus asked the question? Oh, he of little faith. He used a basic, simple nature. We have a garden at our home. We go to the beach. We go elsewhere. When we when we were shooting um, last week and for this week too, we went into the hills and we saw the beauty and vastness. God brought the simplest here. 
the word coming at the church. If you will see the basic lesson that this bird or this natural creature, these natural creatures just trust God. They just move freely. They don't have nothing to hold them out. They don't even plan. They don't sow. They don't do like we. But at the same time, we who are rational beings, we who have a mental construct, and we have the image of God on us. Don't move. Like the nature who responds in resounding praise to the King of Kings. Jesus is just using it. He went on the mountain for us to see. He went into the plains for us to see. He went into the highways and byways for us to see. He wants us to, he invites us to follow him. Notice what he did to his disciples when he sent them out. He sent them, these the very same places where he was. For them to replicate him. Are we moving again? To stay dead in our ways. Worry displaces our focus. Worry affects our stillness. Worry makes us reckless. Again, worry displaces our focus, which means that our focus is no longer fixed on God, or our faith is not hinged in Him because we have allowed worry to overtake us. We have allowed the cares of this life to overshadow our faith in God. It moves our focus. Worry affects our stillness. God calls us for this singular purpose. Remember when he said to be still and know. The knowledge of God allows us to be still. Be still and know that I am God. Stillness then, solitude, they are virtues of a Christian faith that we must pattern. If we are worried, we will not be still. If we are worried, we will be reckless. We will move with our own impulse and intuition. Who Jesus said do that? The pagans. The pagans who have invested themselves and are insured by the material possessions. The pagans who run after the world are the ones who move reckless. Are the ones who move without intentional purpose and focus. When our faith is fixed, it is fixed on the God who is eternal and unmovable. When our faith is fixed, it is fixed on the God who does not change. It is fixed on the God who does not have distortion or disorientation. It keeps our focus in mind. I want us to get them this morning. Especially as we go into this new time. That Christ is calling for his church again. And as much as he called through the Apostle John. For us to wake up again. For us to live out this faith in the world. He wants us to see that if we remain in our own way. Or if we remain in our comfort zones. Or if we remain in our own ideals. We will not be able to live out the kind of faithfulness and faith journey that he calls us to. Faith outworks itself in our practice. It becomes harder when we stay in our ways, when we stay in the ways that we are used to, without opening up ourselves to what Jesus calls us to. It is quite interesting that we have spent so many times caring about the things that God has in his hands and wants us to trust him for him to prove himself to us. May you at this time take seriously the call of Jesus Christ on you and on me.
to love him with our whole heart, with our whole mind, with our strength and effort and energy, to love God with a, with a love like none other, to, to just open up ourselves, to love him. Or it is he first that has loved us and just invites us to reciprocate that. Let us invest our life in or the amount that we have left to the commitment and service of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Why would Let us pray. God, we thank you this morning for your goodness. We thank you, God, that you have established yourself. You have revealed yourself to us. And more so in fullness, reveal yourself in Christ. God, we see you in nature. We see you in the heavens. We see you in our experiences. We see you through biology. We see you through science. We see you everywhere we go. Thank you that you have not hid yourself from us. But God, help us now to like the birds of the year and the, the flowers of the field, Lord, to trust you, to cast ourselves at your feet, to love you, to pattern you, to desire you, to pursue you. And Lord, I pray that, Lord, you will rise up your church again. You will lift us up again. You will make us a new set of people. You will refine us. You will recreate in us. You will reposition us. You will re-angle us, Lord. Father, grant us new focus. Father, allow us to have visions of where we can go. Show us your way, O God. Show us your purposes. Show us what you want us to do. Lord, call us individually and collectively to what you are doing in these last days. May we be relevant to the times. May we be filled with the power of Christ, the power that you have, you have stated that the apostles or the disciples have. May we understand that we can tread upon snakes and scorpions. May we understand, oh God, that we are a force and we have a presence to be reckoned with. May we see the power that is within us. May we understand, oh God, that you have poured out yourself in us. May we understand that your spirit is alive and well within us. And Lord, if we are warm in the benches, wake us up again. Shake us up again. Reposition us again, Lord. Father, I pray for every member that as we move, we will move intentionally. We will understand that we have a role. We will understand that it is not just programs and systems or tradition. But may we understand the newness that you have called us to, Lord. May we move with a newness. May we get up from out of our slumber. Lord, plant our feet on higher ground. Lord, lift us up where we belong. Lord, may we scale the heights. Lord, may our faith catch a glimpse of the glories of you. And that, Lord God, we will not just live in the superficial. But, Lord, as you are the incarnate Christ, the God who dwells with us, may we now be living with the power that you have invested in us. May we be in the now and be relevant for the now. May the message of the gospel be shed abroad in our hearts and then in our nation. Father God, take up not only Pope more missionary, but the church is around. God, give us life again. We have been on our faces. The world has gone on before us. Lord, we are left behind. God, as you called me, my, as you went back from exile to build again Jerusalem, may, oh God, we be built again. May we be built up again. Father, give us life. May we live as salt and light. May your church again echo Echo and bellow out your goodness. Father, we thank you for such an opportunity. We thank you for such a prime time. We thank you, God, that even though it's a crisis, it has given us an opportunity again to rethink, to reevaluate, to analyze. 
Father, I pray for our leaders. I pray for the leaders of the church. That again you give us a love for the ministry. That you give us a love for your way. That you give us a love for the calling to which you have called us. That Lord God as we go up. And as we catch a glimpse of what you are doing. Lord we will not put self in the way. But Lord we will form. And conform to your ways. Father move us as one. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for what you are doing. Lord, we give you glory. And we give you honor. And we say, Lord, all praise belong to you. Let your church arise. Let your church arise. Let your church arise. Let your church arise and stand in the nation. Let your church again love your word. Let your church again love your way. God, we repent for we have fallen short. Lord, we are stuck in our ways. Spirit of God, change our hearts. Make us more like you, Lord. Make us yearn after you, Lord. Make us see the power of the gospel, this gospel that we should not be ashamed of. May we see its effect. Father, the world is running like a horse galloping headlong to its destruction. But may we who have your message be the witnesses. May we, O oh God, be the church. May we be the church where we are. May we be the church where we are. May we not be caught up in the building, but may we understand that we are the church. And the same power, Lord, that dwells within us collectively is the same power, Lord, that is in us individually. We are the salt of the earth. We are the light of the world. May as the light rays connect the stars, may we understand that we emanate and project you where we are, O oh God. So we thank you, Father, for speaking to us. We thank you, Lord, for what you are about to do. And we trust you. And we rely on you. We cast our tears on you. And we thank you, God, that you are the Father who cares. Bless us, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. We thank God for that very powerful word by Pastor Kelly. And, you know, one of the things that resonates with me is that kingdom people know the king of the kingdom. And we know that this king that we serve, this God that we serve, is able to provide for us even in the most difficult circumstances. So that we do not have to worry but we continue to serve him. We continue to lift him up. We continue to do his will. Because the things that we are concerned about, he's also concerned about. And so he says through uh, Paul, 
my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus. And we thank God for that. Kingdom people know the king of the kingdom. And so even as we bring this service to a close, we sing just one verse of this song. His eye is on the sparrow. Then after that we will sing, I would serve him because I love him. Amen. So we're going to affirm the fact that he is our provider. That he cares about every fear on our head. We're going to affirm that. And then we're going to make a commitment. I will serve him because I love him. Amen. I see the cold and As, as a nation, as, as a world, oh God, 
where we have no option but to reflect, O oh God, on the things that have occupied us, O oh Father. And Lord, I pray, O oh God, for a great resetting, O oh God, all around this world, O oh God, that we will seek after those things, O oh God, that are permanent, that we will seek after those things, O oh God, that pleases you, O oh God, that as the church of Jesus Christ, we will serve you because we love you. That we will do your will. God, help us to make that commitment this morning. Help us, O oh God, that, Lord, we will break up our polar ground. We will break up the things that has kept us busy. And, God, that we will follow you with all our hearts. We will give ourselves to you. We will serve those around us. We will say, O oh God, to, to, to those who are in need of a Savior, that Jesus is the answer. Lord, help us to make that commitment even now. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I will serve.
there, wherever in their homes, healing. I pray, O oh God, for that such a one, O oh God, who may be confused at this time, might even be depressed at this time, O oh God. Help them to know that even there your presence is with them. O oh God, your word says, Whither shall I flee from your presence? If I take the wings of the morning to the uttermost parts of the earth, you are there. Even in the deepest midst of the sea, you are there, O oh God. God, I thank you that by your spirit, your ministering right now to the soul of God. Oh God, we pray for a breakthrough right now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, for such a one, oh God, who does not understand their needs, who don't know where, where to turn, oh God. Lord, I pray, oh God, that they, they will call on, the, on your name, oh God. Oh God, because we know that there is power in your name, oh God. There is victory in your name, oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for what you're doing right now, oh God. Minister by your Holy Spirit, we pray in the name of Jesus. Minister, we pray, O oh God. Oh God, we give ourselves to you this morning. We give ourselves to you this morning, O oh God. Lord, we're going to stop trying to organize our own lives. But we place our lives in your hands right now in the name of Jesus. And God, we look to you, O oh God, to lead us, O oh God. Oh God, in those areas, oh God, that you have been calling us, oh God, to serve you, oh God. Lord, we are saying yes, Lord, to your will and to your way, oh God. We are saying yes, Lord, I will follow you, oh God, all the days of my life, oh God. Hallelujah, God, we thank you. We worship you. We give you glory and honor in this place, oh God. And wherever our voice is being heard, O oh God, wherever we are being viewed, O oh God, Lord, I pray for fresh anointing in the name of Jesus. Fresh anointing, we pray in the name of Jesus. Oh God, minister, O oh God, show your anointing on some home this morning, O oh God. Even the backside, O oh God, those who are outside of your will, O oh God, those who are never Oh God, manifest your presence, manifest your love. You've done it before, God. Thank you, God. We worship you, God. We praise you, God. We lift you up. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you. And give you peace and joy in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And the church here and scattered everywhere says, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
uh, join us there for uh, that Zoom meeting and uh, listen up for the announcements. We believe that um, we will be here. We we'll speak it into being uh, next week. You have been such good people observing the protocols, and by that, uh, I believe that we will be here next week. All right. So God bless you all. Listen out. We may have to go to uh, uh, double service uh, sometime in the future as we engage a new norm. But uh, let's uh, keep our ears in tune and hear what the announcement will be. God bless you all. Greet somebody at a distance uh, with your mask. And uh, remember, no congregating for too long. God bless you all. Thank you, technical team. We were having some difficulties this morning, uh, but we hope that uh, others were able to view us this morning. God bless you.